Hi guys, hello and welcome to Helping Hand MBBS. So this is another video in the biochemistry playlist, but this is a very, very, very important video in the whole biochemistry. I guess according to me, in the whole biochemistry, the unit lipid. This is a very important video because this is just how the body is processing the whole lipids that we are forming and that we are eating, and how it gets transported and all of that. so i have tried to put it up in three parts so this first video is going to be an introduction of the different lipoproteins but this is very important video for the next two videos because this will form the basic for the next two videos and if you understand this video the next two videos are going to be a cake walk they will just be like a story and you will realize this when you will see the other two videos that they are really a story because i have put up it into a story form and you will find it very easy so let's start with the basics of lipoprotein first so as you can see the word lipoprotein i guess it's pretty simple english to understand that it is made up of two words lipids and proteins right now what we are going to do is that this basic skeleton that i have put up on the screen this skeleton that you can see we are going to identify what is the lipid in this and what is the protein in this and then we will look at the different types of lipoproteins and how they are different from each other in various aspects so what are the lipids first of all the outer covering is a phospholipid monolayer this phospholipid monolayer is very important see understand why because we all know that the lipid that uh, lipid is not water soluble right lipid is not water soluble but obviously it has to be transported through blood now if it has to be transported through blood and it is not water soluble then how will it be transported so that's why this phospholipid monolayer provides an outer hydrophilic uh, covering and an inner hydrophobic covering so that inside inside all the lipid is present but outside the outside surface is water soluble so that it can be easily transported in the blood next what is this other lipids the other lipids present in the lipoprotein are obviously those lipids which have to be transported like they are the triacylglycerol they are the free cholesterols they are the cholesterol esters okay these are the lipids that have to be transported then next what is the protein part this is the protein part the apoprotein part the apoprotein part is uh, uniquely present in some lipoproteins and some are common to all lipoproteins and they are important for the functioning of the lipoproteins okay so now we will look at the different subtypes of the lipoproteins i hope you understood this much this was very basic please ask me anything in the comment section if you have any doubts in this now we will look at the various types this i have uh, the picture i have taken from internet all credits to to them uh whoever put this nice picture on the internet but uh, i would like to use this picture to make you understand the different type of lipids in this just one picture okay okay so first of all this is the same structure that i have put up over here this is the same structure okay the outer phospholipid layer the inside triacylglycerol and cholesterol esters and the apoproteins outside okay what are the different types the cm is chylomicron this is very low density lipoprotein this is intermediate density lipoprotein this is low density lipoprotein and this is high density lipoprotein so this is a basic concept that you need to understand that as the lipid content of the lipoprotein keeps on decreasing it is decreasing from here to here lipid and the uh, size of the molecule keeps on decreasing the density of the molecule keeps on increasing because the ratio of the protein present in it and the lipid present in it is changing so as you can see that this is the chylomicron this is the chylomicron this chylomicron has a lot of lipid in fact it has the maximum lipid content amongst all the lipoprotein it has the this is a very important point that it has the maximum lipid content among all the lipoproteins and it has the maximum size also with this diagram you will always remember that it has the maximum size 
this is a very simple diagram to uh, just remember that chylomicron has the largest size and the maximum amount of lipid and hence it has the least density obviously you can see that because it has the maximum lipid it will have the least density because the lipid content is inversely proportional to density more the lipid less the density less the lipid more the density okay and it has the least protein content okay now you need to understand that the special apoprotein present on it is b48 this is very important because this is exclusively present on chylomicron you will not find b48 on any other lipoprotein so you have to remember that b48 is for chylomicron okay then what is c2 and e and uh, this uh, ai a1 sorry this E and C2 is helpful in the transport of lipids from the triacylglycerol to the various organs and to the liver also. Okay, you will realize the function of these two when we study the transport video. But understand that this is present on chylomicron. Epo E is present on chylomicron and Epo C2 is present on chylomicron. Okay, so this was all about chylomicron. Now, what is VLDL? VLDL is very low density lipoprotein. And it has on its surface B100. Okay. It has on its surface B100. And what is the function of VLDL? And chylo well, like what is the difference between VLDL and chylomicron? That chylomicron, what it does is that the lipid that we eat, you know, when we eat some fatty food, when we eat some oily or uh, very rich in cholesterol food, so it goes into our intestine. Okay. It goes into our intestine. Whatever fatty food we eat. What chylomicron does is that this is the, the chylomicron takes it up to the various body organs and to the liver also. But how is VLDL different? That VLDL actually is formed inside the liver. You know the lipid that we all know that fatty, fatty acid synthesis occurs in liver also. So whatever the lipid, the cholesterol or the triacylglycerol that is formed inside the liver that is carried by the VLDL and here it is chylomicron okay so this is the difference between vldl and chylomicron and vldl has b100 on it it has again e and c2 because it also has to take the lipid to the various organs you have to understand that epo e epo e and epo c2 is going to be helpful in the transport of lipids to the various body organs and back to the liver also so obviously i will uh, you know give you the details in the next video so please stay tuned moving on to idl idl is actually uh, formed after vldl see this is suppose an organ in a body a peripheral organ is there and this vldl what it did it uh, what it did is that uh, it came here it gave all the triacylglycerol over here and whatever was left behind whatever was left behind is idl okay so this is just a remnant of vldl you have to remember that idl is just a remnant of vldl because you can see that the lipid content has reduced hence the density has increased as compared to vldl and uh, uh, this is just a remnant now moving on to ldl ldl is formed from idl okay when this idl gives it back to the liver then LDL is formed or maybe if this IDL goes to some other organ and gives this lipid to that organ then what is formed is a LDL more of the triacylglycerol has decreased then again the density will increase and density increases so that it forms the low density lipid as compared to the intermediate density lipid you can understand that the density is decrease uh, density is increasing from here to here chylomicron has the least density sdl has the maximum density and what is again the special molecule present on ldl b100 only obviously because vldl idl and ldl all three are actually the same except that the lipid content is less and uh, the rem the the surface molecules are decreasing but b100 is sort of like an identity card which will always be present with vldl idl and ldl coming to the last which is hdl hdl is responsible 
for the reverse cholesterol transport that is it takes cholesterol from the organs and gives it back to the liver and also it takes it from the intestine and gives it to the liver this is responsible for reverse cholesterol transport it has the least lipid content the least lipid content and the maximum protein and it has again the least size you can see it from the diagram only that it has the least size okay and what is the special apoprotein present on its surface it is apoa1 what is this apoa1 i would like to comment on this what is this apoa1 we will uh, look at the detail of apoa1 in the next video but apoa1 is having an enzymatic activity which is lcat lcat is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase and cetp is cholesterol ester transfer protein we will look at the details of these two proteins in the next video but just remember that this is the apoa1 which has these two activities and now let me tell you one very very important point that this uh, you know this apoe and apoc2 that you see here i told you in the beginning only that this is responsible for lipid transport to the organs but cholesterol does uh, but hdl does not do that hdl has to take the lipids from the organ so it does not have much importance of c2 and e but why does it still have this apoe and apoc2 because it is like a repository you know it is like a bag which keeps this apoe and c2 with himself and whenever chylomicron needs it or whenever vldl needs it or whenever idl needs it or whenever in they need it it is given to them from here okay so this is the function of hdl in uh, short and uh, i will tell you about all of this again you know when we talk about the whole transport process you will understand that why all of these were important all the functions will get fit in your mind when i tell you those stories but this was this is something that you need to remember from here itself the size the density the surface molecules and uh, what is the function in short now two important lipoproteins that i want to tell you uh, are lipoprotein a and lipoprotein x so first lipoprotein a but talking of lipoprotein a i would like to tell you one thing beforehand that see our body has extensive clotting mechanism and there can be like possibility that somewhere clots are formed and they are unnecessarily formed and somewhere necessary also but those clots have to be ultimately dissolved okay if there is a clot okay there is a clot it has to be ultimately dissolved how is it dissolved that we have a protein in our body plasminogen okay it gets converted into plasmin this plasminogen is inactive plasmin is active what this plasmin does is that this is responsible for this degradation of this clot it will break this clot okay but how is this plasminogen activated into plasmin this is activated by tpa what is tpa tissue plasminogen activator tissue plasminogen activator this is the normal thing that happens in the body now i will tell you about what is this lipoprotein a lipoprotein a forms a disulfide bond with apo b100 actually sorry this lipoprotein a this lipoprotein a is actually apo a which is forming a disulfide bond with apo b 100 and this is this the structure that is formed this that is formed is a structural analog of plasminogen 
structural analog you understand that it looks exactly similar to plasminogen so now this tpa will get confused that to bind to whom to bind to plasminogen or to bind to this epoa but what happens is that it obviously goes and binds to epoa also and what happens is that now tpa is busy with epoa and it will not be able to do this and hence this clot will not be dissolved and there will be unnecessary clot formation in the body and that unnecessary clot formation is thrombosis so this is a very high risk factor this lipoprotein a is a very high risk factor for thrombosis especially in indian population it is a very it is found in a very high amounts and uh, atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease all of this can be can happen in people who have very high levels of lipoprotein a and i hope you understand why this is the why of it that why there is a risk of thrombosis and all of that in people who have high amounts of lipoprotein a last here is lipoprotein uh, x this is not much important okay this is the liver and you understand that this is the gall uh, the bile duct now what happens is that whenever some stone is formed here some obstruction maybe some tumor or anything whenever there is a blockage of the bile duct whatever cholesterol which had to form bile and had to go through the gall bladder through the bile duct to the intestine is now getting stored is now getting stored this is known as the bile that is getting stored is known as cholestasis cholestasis is what the stasis of bile the stasis of bile cholestasis is stasis of bile and whenever this stasis happens it binds to phospholipid this bile will bind to phospholipid and form lipoprotein x now if you find high levels of lipoprotein x in some person's blood what can you defer from it you can obviously infer that this person has some cholestasis in the body and you can easily diagnose that there might be some obstruction in the bile duct and now you will look at the bile duct and you will you will uh, try to diagnose the reason for that blockage and you will come to a definite diagnosis so this was about lipoprotein x so i have covered mostly about all the lipoproteins that are important for our body but the most important are these five and you need to, you need to know a to z of these lipoproteins uh, and more of the information is coming in the next two videos so please 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 watch those videos as well and please like this video as well and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you get a notification whenever i put those next two videos and i hope to see you soon in those videos uh, when you will be learning the transport from my stories thank you for watching this video peacefully patiently uh, see you soon all the best all of you thank you